Guys, I'm here with Dave Terezi, Mr. Energy. Oh, yeah, I'm psyched to be here. Thanks for having me. And I'm. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about this right here. Oh, my goodness. I hope everybody's ready for a great show tonight. Welcome to the Dragon Drive Show presented by Summit Racing. Uh, Eric, you did a great job on that, dude. That is Thank you. an amazing setup there. I, I really enjoy that. Guys, my name is Mike Narks. We are here tonight to talk about everything Drag and Drive. It's going to be insane. I run dragondrive.com and all, uh, let's see, well, let me explain how I explained it earlier to another podcaster. Um, we've gathered all of the historical data for Drag and Drive history. So it's pretty wild. And then also a big part of the Drag and Drive addiction group. Eric, please tell them who you are, sir. I am Eric White. I am your co-host of the Dragon Drive Show and Dragon Dragon Drive News. I help produce these shows, and I run 815 LSX Swaps and Motorsports Paparazzi. That's right. He is a busy guy. Well, y'all, this week we have a huge show. Lots of uh, information. Lots of fun tonight. We're going to talk to Clint Sadowski, who drives one of... Can, I, can we get a shirt that says one of my favorite... Uh, drag and drive cars out there. He is a MLB pitcher turned into competitive drag and drive racer. And then another one of my favorite people from the drag racing community, Monday morning racer is going to be on. And we're going to talk to him about the drag and drive world champion point series and get his thoughts. Cause he covers so much NHRA and high level racing that I really want to get his feedback on what he sees and how he feels that this event is, or this point series presented by Summit is going to be uh, good for the community or bad for the community. It's going to be a, a really good interview, I think. Yeah. Um, let's not forget about the Dragon Drive podcast. So again, we have been uploading yes. these uh, to most podcast streaming services. We're on quite a few of them. Uh, we are releasing episodes daily. This morning, we dropped episode number 12 already, um, which means we should be caught up by sometime next week, and then we'll go yep. back to uh, just uploading once a week. Yep. Uh, all you got to do is tell your Alexa, play Drag and Drive podcast, and it will play the latest episode. Yeah, it's exciting. I want to say thank you to you for doing all of the work to edit all of those. I know you have uh, a lot of time and those were at episode 18 or 19 tonight. And so you've gone back through and edited all of those so people can listen to them and enjoy that stuff. But speaking of podcast, I talked to the automotive ADHD guy today and his podcast that I was on last week will actually drop on Friday. So we're going to talk about me a little bit, a little bit of history for my stuff. We're going to talk about Dragon Drive Addiction, obviously, and the Dragon Drive World Champion and what all of that means for the entire sport. So kind of excited to do that. I don't know what time it will be, but we're going to, uh, as soon as we see it, we're going to let, we're going to let everybody know that it's out there. And a new thing this week that Eric created or that Eric has helped with is we now have commercials, guys. So let's play this commercial from our presenting sponsor, Summit Racing. What would you do with a $255 Summit Racing gift card? Why just think about a Summit Racing gift card when you can spend it? We're giving you the opportunity to win a $255 gift card with our limited time YouTube anniversary giveaway. All you have to do is subscribe to our page, click that notification bell, and comment on the official giveaway post on our YouTube channel. We'll randomly draw the winner from our subscribers. Be sure to check the description for terms, rules, and conditions. Why 255? Because Summit Racing is celebrating 55 years in 2023, and $55 just isn't enough. 
Subscribe, punch that notification bell, and comment for your chance to win. Good luck. Awesome. I like that guy. Justin is a great dude. I actually met him at a few different events this last year and intend to do the same again for 2023. So let's jump into the found on summitracing.com segment. And I want to talk first about trailer brakes because as we go through some mountainous uh, events this year, we've got Rocky Mountain Race Week and Race Week, both in the Rocky Mountain area. Trailer brakes are a must if you do not have vented rotors on your car. That's literally a rule from Rocky Mountain. And then also, you know, Drag Week is going to be kind of in the Smokies uh, from Bristol to back to Darlington. I think we're going to get into some hilly areas there as well. So I think this is a great idea. The reason I chose this one specifically, one, it had more reviews than anything else, uh, and it, they were good. And then two, it's not as much of a knee banger, I guess is what you would call it. Race cars are already tight because of cages and things. So I thought this was really good and it gives you a dial indicator and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, and 240 bucks, you know, runs up to eight different brakes on uh, one to four axles. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then it is an inertia based setup for this one. And they do have a time based setup as well. So you can find this again, summitracing.com. But y'all, are you ready for this one? Eric, are you ready for this? I'm I don't excited know for ready. this one. Listen, guys, you can go to Summit Racing and buy Dragon Drive Addiction shirts. How cool Listen is to that? Listen to me when I tell you this. This is so amazing, and we really appreciate Summit doing this. This is a designed by Summit um, edition right here. So this is going to be really cool. So we're going to see some um, apparel that will be out in the world. So you can get your T-shirts there. You can throw it right in your Summit order that you're going to be placing as you get ready for the Dragon Drive season coming up. And you can also get hoodies. So exciting. Right there. Throw it in. Free shipping on anything over 99 bucks. So guys, make sure if you're not there yet, make sure you throw one of these in there to get over that limit so you can get free shipping. And y'all, they have these in stock ready to go. So thank you very much to Summit. I can't wait to, to see some folks wearing these at some of the events that we've got coming up because uh, there's a lot. I'm just going to say that right now. We're going to go over them here in just a few minutes. Heck yeah, that's super cool yeah, that Summit's uh that Summit's selling those shirts and hoodies. <laughs> yes. Like yeah. how many people can say that their stuff is being sold at Summit? <laughs> well, I mean, us and another one of our race car friends, Sweet Patina, they have their stuff available at summitracing.com too. So it's exciting. It's really exciting. And then another big announcement. Man, I feel like we're just like this huge announcement as we go. Um, the channel is now monetized, uh, which means that doesn't mean we're going to make any money from YouTube unless people support us with Super Chats or Super Stickers, which gives you the opportunity to provide a shout out. Or what I like to do is talk a little bit of trash in there or you can ask a question and it will be highlighted and come up and it will stay up top of the chat on the YouTube channel while, you know, depending on the amount you donate, uh, we'll keep it there that long. So it's pretty exciting. So we appreciate ahead of time. Thank you in advance uh, is what I'm trying to say. That's pretty exciting. And it it is because everybody has watched this every couple of weeks. I mean, or every week and we come on, we've, this is episode 19 of a live show weekly. I mean, this is absolutely insane in the news. I think we're on episode 16 of the, of the year. So it's pretty crazy there. So thank you very much, everybody, for, for that. Appreciate that a bunch. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a lot of hard work to get here and uh, and that helps. Let's start talking events though, dude. This this one right here, guys, there are people in a parking lot right now, literally as we talk at Carolina Drag Cruise at Spartan Carolina, Spartansburg, South Carolina. Um, teching in, getting registered for Carolina Drag Cruise, which starts. Tomorrow, they're going to be racing tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it kicked off about two hours ago with the tech party and pre-party. I think a lot of uh, these events are going to start kind of doing that. I love it. We've got Nostalgia Nights doing a, a huge party the night before, having a band. They're, doing, they're encouraging camping coming out, everybody having fun there. So I think, you know, events like Carolina Drag Cruise doing this pre-party there it's a uh, it's in Applebee's parking lot in Spartanburg South Carolina if you are close make sure you get down there plus they are teching cars so it's going to save you time on race day so you're not going to have to do your tech on race day um, the team is also providing dinner for 
the participants on Saturday night pulled pork sandwiches and all kinds of fixings at a, I think it's called Cyclops Brewery uh, is what it, um, I think is what it said. I don't remember. I didn't put it in the notes. So I just want to say good luck to all the racers and event team this week. I know they have a little different layout. Uh, Mike's wife, Michael Lone, is the promoter of this event. His wife will actually be posted up at a secondary checkpoint that's like 30 or 40 miles away. So they, you will make your passes and then drive to turn in your slips, which I think is really a cool way. I think that's what's great about all these different events is we have different styles that they go to. So make sure you're following our friend Jesse Fox at 3G Video. He is on site. He'll have all the event coverage and things like that. And then um, I was flipping through the Facebook page today or the Facebook group for Carolina Drag Crews, and I grabbed two cars that I think I want to watch all week. So Bronson Porter, this Fox body is super, super clean. Love the color. Love all the updates he's done lately. Um, I don't know anything about the powertrain, though. I didn't dig that deep. And then the next car is Jason Robertson's. I think this is a DF Goblin um, based on all the other cart stuff I've been around in the past. And you guys know my uh, affliction for cart stuff. This is uh, this is great. And I think he's going to draw a ton of attention during the week. I know we always do in our cart. So if somebody can tag those guys or uh, I'll be sending messages after this to get specs on those cars. And again, we'll be following that event. Most likely have updates every day with who's leading a class and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that thing's super cool. LTX, I would totally do a drag and drive on a modded ATV. <laughs> no thanks. I, I can't. These guys that do them on motorcycles, like uh, Dusty Moody and um, Chris Baker and Pat Cook, you guys are nuts already. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm really excited about this one. It's going to be really cool. All right, you wanna. Uh, what is what event is he doing? Yeah, th so they're doing Carolina Drag Cruise with those. So they're racing, you know, tomorrow night. All right, dude, are you ready to drop into the next bit of we've added some drag and drive events to our list that we've been going over every week? We have typically ran through Summit Racing Midwest Drag just because there were so many. Well, now that there are a few behind us, we're moving on out to the end of July. Should I get a big breath for this? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just hammer through these. All right, man. So we have first up is the Road Trip Drag Challenge number one in Queensland, Australia, May 26th through 28th. Um, I'm going to have to get over and see these guys at some point. So Australia, be ready. I'm coming. I don't know about 24, but maybe 25. I don't know. Uh, King of the Open Road, which we will be at as an entire team. Uh, King of the Open Road, May 27th and 28th, except for Eric. Sadly, he's staying home. Um, so we can send him to other events. I have a kid that's graduating actually that day. That's the reason I won't be there. I mean, priorities, dude. I get it. That's <laughs> that is a that's a one hundred percent priority because the the more of those kids of yours that graduate, the more time you have and empty nesters and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, uh, Thunder Valley Raceway Park, Oklahoma City. We're gonna have a blast at that one. Alex Garcia is racing her car, so she is in the 90 class. We're going to be following her diligently. The merch trailer for Dragon Drive Addiction will be on site on Saturday night and Sunday. We'll be there Saturday morning too, but uh, you know we're leaving at 7 a.m. for the cruise, so going to be a good day there. And then we have Six Summer right after that, the next weekend, June 4th through 9th at Cordova. Uh, we're going to try and see if Eric can sneak over there for maybe a day or two, <coughs> calling sick at work, you know, things like that. And then Alaska Speed Week, guys, this one's going to be crazy. I'm excited about uh, seeing events reach to those parts of the country that we've never seen before. So June 16th through 8th, oh, no, sorry, sorry, June 11th through 16th at Alaska Raceway Park. And they're doing Alaska Raceway Park start and end and then an airfield or something like that for the second day of racing. But it's actually, you know, like you saw there a five day of driving event because there's the distance between those is so far. And then we go back over the pond street weekend, UK, uh, June 16th through 18th, which is a, well, it's like a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday or something like that. So this one, another one, um, this one's in the UK, I think, um, Willowboro, uh, in the UK, this will be a good event. And we're trying to sneak our buddy, Ken White from the Dragon Drive fans, UK page, trying to sneak him over there to get a day or two of coverage for that as well. 
and then back over to North America to BC Drag It Challenge, British Columbia for June 15th through 19th. So if you're adding that up, that's right. You're listening to that correctly. That is three events across one weekend. Okay. That's pretty awesome. And all over the world. So you got Alaska that same weekend. You've got Street Weekend in the UK and you've got BC Dragon Challenge. So three different countries represented on the same weekend uh, in June. So that's pretty awesome. We go right from those into Rocky Mountain Race Week 1.0. That is Again, Rocky Mountains, June 24th through 30th, and it starts at Kearney, Nebraska. No, yes, Kearney, Nebraska. It starts at Kearney. Sorry, I get it in 2.0 mixed up a little bit. So it starts at Kearney. I would love to attend this event. I think the weather is going to be good for this one. I'm hoping that you guys get some cooler temperatures. And then, so that's June 24th through 30th. That will end our June session. Another big breath here for all of the <laughs> July events, dude. <laughs> What's funny is you guys, uh, Eric, and I see this entire list all at once, right? So Street Week Sweden is July 8th through 15th. Now, this is another national level drag and drive event. And I'm hoping that we're going to see Michael Westberg. I know Stefan Gustafson has shipped the Corvette back home. So I'm hoping we're going to see him participate in that. I think that is the reason he shipped the car home. So uh, July 8th through 15th. Then Summit Racing Midwest Drags, same week, July 10th through 14th, Virginia Motorsports Park. Again, I am going to be on site. There are still a few spots available that you can register for that. We just had a huge name register because they're coming for the Dragon Drive World Champion. Uh, Doc McIntyre and Jeff McConnell have registered for um, Summit Racing Midwest Drags, which is really cool because, because it's an event that's happened before, you know, if they reset records in classes, they get additional points. So it's kind of neat. And then we have uh, Heads Up Hustle. So, again, we're talking about more events the week that weekend. Um, sorry, you have um, Central Illinois Streetcar Shootout and Stroll July 14th through 15th on the screen there. Do we have one for Heads Up Hustle? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yep. And then Heads Up Hustle is July 14th through 16th. So are you listening to me here? We got one more that weekend. The road trip drag challenge number two is July 14th through 16th in Queensland, Australia. Oh, hey, sorry. Back, we sorry. We back up to Heads Up Hustle. Yep. So it is in Milan, Michigan. Then we have Central Illinois Streetcar Shootout in Havana, Illinois. The road trip jag, drag challenge number two, July 14th through 16th in Queensland, Australia. So, guys. How many events is that over that weekend? So Street Week Sweden will end on that Saturday. Summit Racing Midwest Drags ends that Friday. Central Illinois ends, or it is that weekend. Heads Up Hustle is that weekend. And the Road Trip Drag Challenge is that weekend. So that's right. Five drag and drive events across the world are going to be happening the weekend of July 15th and 16th. Y'all. Like that motivates me so much because what that means is there's so many new drag and drive racers, so many veteran drag and drive racers that are going to be, oh man, our I Survived a Drag and Drive 2023 list is going to be absolutely massive, absolutely massive. Uh -huh. um, the LTX here is asking, did the Swedish S10 make it to its new owner? I saw Michael Westberg's post the other day shaking hands and stuff, and it looked like it was driving away, so I would think so. So pretty exciting there. Uh, Rich, yes, certainly will stop by and say hi during Summit. I'll probably be wearing you out. Actually, I'll be talking to you quite a bit. Um, I am a pit announcer at Summit Racing Midwest Drags, and so we'll be running around looking for stories uh, all week. And then Miles of Mayhem finishes out the July, what I'm going to call first half of the Dragon Drive season. So July 23rd through 28th, Edmonton, Alberta, is the start and end point of Miles of Mayhem. This event, this will be its third year. We will be creating an entire Miles of Mayhem historical data page within the dragondrive.com because they have hosted three events. <laughs> so say that five times fast. So we'll, what that means is we will have 
um, class leaders by like top 10 of all the classes and things like that. So it's going to be really fun. I'm going to be very, very, very busy in June and July because for each event completely changes all of the lists, no matter if it's a regional or a national level event, it will all change on you know, top 100, top 50, top 25 of any class, all that kind of stuff is going to change after each event. So what's wild is if an event ends, let's say it ends on the uh, July 15th, whoever is locked in on the 14th, they may not be on the list. So the top 100 list is always a kind of our premier list. It's going to be insane because you may go from number 40 on the list to like number 117 you may not even be on the list because of the the fast cars that are on there so our top 100 list is based on quarter mile national level events so when you guys jump on to dragondrive.com you'll know kind of what's going on so here is why in my opinion drag and drive racers is saving drag racing over the next 79 days from right now where we're sitting right here there are 61 days of drag and drive racing across the world. That is absolutely monstrous to think about that a group of racers are going to be driving on the street. That's what another reason I think it is going to be great. So not only are we going to have the drag race uh, facilities having good days because of all the publicity and everybody coming to see this new form of racing, but also everybody that's in a small town is not prepared for what's about to happen. I think that's why I've said it all year. This is the stepping point for drag and drive to be mainstream. That is why we have pushed so hard and posted so many times and follow and message and comment and do all that stuff for you guys is because I'm telling you, we saw it. It was fixing to just skyrocket and it's about to. And the cool part is they're all over the country. They're everywhere. So pretty exciting for that. Um, we do have a new event that is going on the list tonight. I didn't have it up yet, but the um, uh, Carl Stancil is Carl Stancil is putting together a new event the second weekend of October at Martin, Michigan. So it'll be up on the list. I think it's Drop the Hammer is the name of uh, uh, Great Lakes Drop the Hammer. So we'll have it up with a link to the page for it as well on dragondrive.com slash news and then find the 2023 events post. Whew. Dude, that was a bunch. That was, <laughs> that was a lot. A lot. Uh, Rich Guido, buddy, I can't wait. I'm, I'm going to ride with him in 2024 for Miles of Mayhem. I'm going to put that into the world right now and, and make that happen. I'm just saying, don't shortcut it, Rich. Just, just write it out, Miles of Mayhem, please. Yeah, dude, he's yeah, he has a real good opportunity to be, to be the guy that could could win the Dragon Drive World Champion. He could be the first one. All right, what do we got here? Uh, hey guys, have you heard of uh, Have Ass Customs on YouTube? Awesome channel. Oh man, his shot burnt down. Dang, uh, he was in Texas heading back to Canada. Man, sorry, that is sad to hear. Wow. All right, dude, do you want to tell them what is next on your list there? Because uh, this is exciting. I do. How many times have I said exciting tonight? Uh, like three or four, <laughs> not too many. Uh, again, we have our trailer burn or parking lot beers and trailer burnout shirt. Uh, we only have 10 days left for the yep. pre order. So if you haven't ordered yet, make sure you head over to dragondrive.com and pick up a shirt. It is $30 each. Again, the pre-order ends on 520. So if you don't want to miss out, we're not going to be making these shirts again after this, at least for a long time is what we're saying. Yep. Um, so 30 bucks, free shipping, 10 days, yep. head over and get you one. Yeah, we, we have met the minimum order requirements, and so this shirt is happening. So everyone that has ordered it, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. And, uh, yes, race car friends. So that is awesome. Let's move to, oh, the interview I just got done with. I was literally sliding in because I was talking to Melinda Russell of the International Women's Motorsports Association. Um, she is the director of that entire thing, and she 
her and I recorded a segment for her show called Let's Talk Racing Podcast. I would discuss the Dragon Drive World Champion. We discussed Emily Ballard that is in the newest magazine of Women's Motorsports Network, uh, the magazine that's up on the screen there. And then um, she talked to Emily Ballard, which has a great write-up. I mean, it's like four pages in there for her. And then also included two pages for the Dragon Drive uh, for Dragon Drive Addiction. So if you want to flip to those pictures, yep. So there's the, the second page you can see within the magazine. If you would like to follow them, find Women's Motorsport Network on Facebook. Give them a like. I would certainly appreciate you guys showing the support that they have shown us. Melinda has always been really kind to us and shared a lot of our content and is always interested in helping promote females within the motorsports industry. There is you know, obviously she covers every bit of the, the gamut of any kind of car racing. So she has, you know, drag racing, circle track, um, you know, dirt track, karting, all that kind of stuff. If you are a female and in the motorsports industry, definitely make sure you hit them up and, uh, and follow them on Facebook or online. Again, it's women's motorsports network. So pretty cool. Well, uh, let's thank another one of our sponsors and then let's bring in Mr. Clint Sadowski our first guest of the evening. Molly Motorsports is the official piston of DragonDrive.com. Molly's Power Pack Piston is the perfect candidate for your drag and drive car. Molly Motorsports competes in drag and drive events and supports our community. Project manager Eric Grillo raced a 10 second stick shift Nova at Hot Rod Drag Week 2022. He's also competed in Rocky Mountain Race Week last year with his C10 truck. Visit MollyMotorsports.com for the most recent line of products. All right. So one thing that I, I want to do before we bring Clint in, I want to talk about how cool he is before he gets on here. And, uh, and I embarrass him. I embarrass him. He is a 10 time drag and drive competitor, multiple podium finishes across all events, six time Rocky mountain race week competitor, two time hot rod drag week competitor, two time sick week competitor. And he won the 2023 pro street class with a seven, six ninety eight average Best finish so far is Sick Week of 2023, so that car just keeps getting faster. Uh, he races one of the nicest 68 Camaros in Dragon and Drive. And like we talked about earlier, he was a professional pitcher. So the dude has some height climbing in and out of that car. So let's go ahead and bring him on. Oh, maybe hang on. <laughs> you got it. Can we add him? There we go. Clint, how are you, sir? Good. How are you guys? Man, we are doing great. We are doing great. Bring you on. You've got looks like you've got an orange helmet there uh, over your right shoulder. That's kind of exciting. Yeah, that's a nice one. Great. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and tell some folks a little bit? I mean, let's probably don't have to go into all your history, but uh, they definitely got to know who you are and, and what you do. Yeah, Clint Sadowski. I've got a '68 Camaro. We run normally the 275 60 tire, ultimate radio class and stuff like that. It's got a Mueller built 427, dark block, uh, precision, 98 millimeter turbo, hydraulic roller. You know, it's pretty much got all the good stuff in, internally. Uh, running a Hydrostar power glide and uh, just a, you know, a lot of the basic LS stuff that a lot of people run and just had a lot of good luck with, with the combination. I would say so. And also, I mean, a, a lot of good luck uh, as far as good skill uh, driving, too. You've had, I mean, you've been in that car a lot. You've put a lot of miles on that car. So I know maintenance and all that kind of stuff is always important. Um, how long have you owned that car? I've had the car since uh, 17. I uh, oh, bought man. a roller out of Austin, Texas. And, you know, I kind of was making the decision to build my own car or try to find one. And I really just didn't have time to, to, to build one from the ground up, first of all, having the knowledge how to do it and all that stuff. But uh, I think I got a pretty good deal with this car. I mean, it already had 850 cage at the time, the Smith Racecraft front end, uh, you know, Wellwood disc brakes, a, a great nine inch in it. So great combination to start with. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh, now, did you build it uh, specifically for drag and drive or is that something that you just happened to kind of get into after it was built? No, I had that purpose. Uh, 
I'd been racing dirt bikes and stuff and I needed a little break from that, some surgeries I had. And I had first attended drag week in like 2012, uh, in Tulsa, you know, back when all the heavy hitters yeah. were nuts and, you know, everyone was there and, and, you know, that just caught my attention. I was like, man, I want to do this really bad. So I finally got that opportunity four or five years later and just has progressed from there. I've had so many people help me. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yep. Um, so how long have you been into racing cars? You mentioned dirt bikes. Is that something you've been been doing for a long time or? Yeah, so I started racing dirt bikes when I was a kid. Uh, did do a motocross a little bit. Then I gave all that up to play baseball. And while I was playing baseball, I did do some drag racing. Just had like a couple of different Corvettes and stuff, you know, real fast, you know, uh, 1470s in the quarter mile, you know, back then trying to get two <laughs> with the air filter and the exhaust system and all that cool stuff. So, yeah, I always got to enjoy it when I was younger, but then it kind of went away for a while, but got to start all over again at about the age of 45. Nice. That's good. And then your, your kids also race motocross. So yeah, yeah, a couple, my, a couple tips from dad there. Yeah. Yeah. You know that my son raced motocross for a while. And then my daughter Jasmine, that's 15. She's really competitive racer. And, uh, she, she does the whole circuit for the amateur stuff. And, uh, eventually here, probably in the next four or five months, she's going to get in the car and start to learn to drive the car and stuff. Oh man. That's exciting. Yeah, that, that is really exciting. Well, let's talk about uh, your drag and drive history a little bit because you've been around it a lot. You know, ten events—that's a long time. That's a lot of events, and uh, I, I think most of well, I know most of your events have been Rocky Mountain Race Week stuff. How, how did you get involved with Rocky Mountain as compared to to maybe Drag Week? Oh, I had seen you know obviously the Drag Week at the time, and then the Rocky Mountain came in next. And uh, friends with John Dotson and all those guys, anything automotive in, in Texas, and you know they all did these events, and they helped me out to get started with the car. And you know I just kind of followed them along and tried to learn. And you know, like I said, without them, I couldn't have ever got started and and, and had the success that I had early on with that even. Yeah, th those guys are pretty good. And you know, Aaron Schaefer was on last week, and he was talking about how much they helped him. So, yeah, I think that's probably our next batch of people is maybe to get John and, and Jason Dozier on. Yeah, they're great guys. They're very knowledgeable about about all the entire racing community. Yep. So let's talk about your, your first event. How did that go? How, how did you, you know, what class were you in? How did you finish? Well, so it was drag week in Atlanta. I believe it was 18. And, uh, I meet John and all those guys out there. And long story short, I get to the hotel after not sleeping for two days. Uh, they knock on my door after two hours of sleep in the hotel and said, you have a gas leak. Well, I had the gas in my fuel cell, cracked the fuel cell, right? So John helps me. We find this guy down the road to weld it up, get me going. So we get to the track. It's, you know, it's test and tune before the, you know, day one. And uh, at that time, the car was just, we had it on just race fuel and, uh, Sleep deprivation, I forgot that I still had two or three gallons of 91 in there and then adding about four or five gallons of 110 didn't work right at about 20 pounds of boost down the track. And I, I grenaded the motor and mm. didn't even make it past the, you know, the second pass down the track. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, uh, that's a tough one. That's one thing that nobody really talks about. We try and warn people about that. It's like sleep deprivation is really hard because you're thrashing to get the car ready. You're thrashing to get to the event because you don't want to take the extra time off of work. And so then you end up just like you're saying, you, you roll in and, ah, oh, dang, I forgot I had the, the regular fuel in there. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a great learning experience. I, I cried the whole way home. <laughs> I can imagine. Now the plan of back to Oklahoma. Well, oh, man. So did you, I, I guess, did you put it in the trailer and go ahead and head to the house? Yeah, so I went home and, and I brought my friend with me, Chad Crawford, back with me. And we actually, uh, I had a, uh, another six liter just block. And we basically just took everything out of that 200,000 mile motor, used to use head studs, the LQ or the LS9 head gaskets, just put this other motor back together, had no idea if it was going to be any good. And I ran it back down to anything automotive and they tuned it for me and that we were on E85 then. And I brought it back here just to race locally some. And we were running 860s, 870s with that junk motor, just having a blast, you know. And uh, yeah. after the motor was so good, I sold it to a kid. And 
last I knew he was still running it in the last 10 pickups. So that is awesome. That is awesome. Well, um, one thing I, I didn't talk about was your, your completion rate. Uh, h- how many have you completed? Let's see. Uh, I completed all, I, all, I guess of the 10 that I've completed seven of them. Uh, hey, the other that's a good I, number in this game. Yeah. Especially going pretty fast, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, definitely, uh, you know, especially Rocky mountain race week. I mean, that's, that drive from Denver up through the park, you know, like that's just park and back down and across the, the flat plains of, you know, Colorado and Kansas, you know, a couple of years ago, it was brutally hot. Yeah. You know? And uh, I, at the time had my coolant temp sensor was bad and was lying to me temperature. So yeah, that made it for fun, but you know, uh, yeah. The, the other ones that I, I went to drag week uh, in Virginia and was following Dotson and, and Dozier and all of them. And after we left Cecil County on day two, we were just about north of Philly by the Jersey Turnpike when I heard a clicking noise. Mm. It was a lifter. So those guys, I told them to go on. They helped me. They assessed the, the, the problem. I left the car at a hotel with the intake off of it in North Philly, grabbed an Uber to the airport, got on a plane, flew back to Richmond, got my truck and trailer. This is on 9-11. I remember that coming back through D.C. up 95. Uh, when I got there, it was probably about 1030 at night. Well, my wife had just called me. We just had our first granddaughter. And that was in Louisiana, you know, get your stuff and come to Louisiana. So anyway, I found like four or five people at like this steakhouse bar that were still at the bar. And it offered them, you know, come help me push the car on the trailer. Help me put my tra- little trailer in the back of the truck. They did. And I finally got out of there probably sometime like one in the morning and drove to Louisiana and then back to Oklahoma. And it was like 4,304 miles that I drove that entire trip. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That was a, that was a quite an adventure. (laughs) I can say so. And, you know, I think that's, I hate to say it, but I think car breaking stories are almost what makes Dragon Drive so much fun. You know, yeah. like you would have never gotten taken an Uber to the airport, got on the airplane, flew back, flew back and got your truck, uh, it, you know, if you had just kept on going and racing. So yeah, that's right. awesome. And exactly. you got a new grandbaby out of it. So. Yeah, it was, it was great. And I, was, I definitely was worn out when I got home. But yeah, it was a good <laughs> learning lesson. That that was even further than Atlanta, believe me. <laughs> oh, man, I can only imagine because, you know, then you got a little bit of adrenaline. You're trying to get there and trying to see all of that stuff. So it's yeah. cool. So I was going through some pictures and I come across a couple here, this one. Um, but then I envisioned this being the next photo. <laughs> what, uh, do you remember this, this picture oh, yeah. here and, and what happened here? Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. sure he remembers that South, picture. South, yeah. That was in, in South Georgia Motorsports Flex. Uh, so when, when Jim Parkinson, who helps me tune by JP, I mean, I can't go without that guy either. He's, yeah. you know, the best help. So we decided to run in the 31560 on the car too. That would put us in the pro street class and try something different. Well, brand new motor. The motor was really strong on the dyno, which, you know, you just dyno just to get your, your, your parameters right. Got on the road to Florida. And I mean, the thing just was making a lot of power and it kept lifting the front end. Well, as you see there, that one, that one, I think I was next to uh, Doc, Doc, Malk, Doc McIntyre and, uh, it it so as i shifted to second it still came up i was like okay well now i'm in second i'm probably what two three hundred feet off the line all you can see is the sky i'm like i'm gonna have to just try to lift for just a second and get back in it and luckily with that picture i mean that picture is worse than what the actual damage of was of the car so you know that's a good thing but uh yeah. Yeah, I kind of learned to drive that car that week like a two-stroke motocross bike, slipping the clutch. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, it didn't you've... damage it enough that you couldn't finish? You were still able to keep going? Oh, yeah, I was able to go. After that, I came back. Uh, we assessed the damage, which pretty much it was just the wastegate and, and, the, and the tip off the wastegate. And we came back out and raced uh, Tina. And I think we went like a 760 something and then loaded up and, and headed south. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, the, I, I will say your car is one of the funnest to watch. It it really it leaves great. It it just goes so fast. And I mean, you know, Jim is a a great tickler of the keys for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, he gets it down. And you know, we just we hadn't had any testing. Well, you know, it's hard to test for sick week. I mean, you know, yeah. probably the racers are where it's too cold to do anything until you get there. You know, we didn't yeah. have to go down a week before any of that stuff. So yeah. Uh, I think you kind of mentioned it earlier, but what actually drew you to getting into drag and drive events? Just thinking it's so cool to have a car that you could drive everywhere and go to all the different scenic views, you know, especially going to Rocky Mountain the first time. That was absolutely amazing. You know, you talk about being nervous going, okay, we're getting ready to drive 10,000 feet. Are we even going to make it, you know, type of deal. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was, it was all of that attraction after, because actually the 2012 drag week came through my hometown too. So, you know, I remember uh, being up on our Grand Avenue at one o'clock in the morning when Lutz had uh, the 57 and then he had the evil twin that he had built for his, his son also they built. And mm -hmm. that video of them driving through at like one o'clock in the morning after them having issues that, you know, earlier that day. So, yeah, yeah. I was, I've got to do this. I've got to try it. Well, so I'll tell a story about that too. Me and a guy named Brian Lawson uh, both worked at JB Hunt and saw that it was coming to Tulsa. And so we both skipped work and drove to Tulsa for the day and got over and basically watched Larson get the S10 ready and make his passes. And when he got done, he like, they physically changed turbos and I think intake and tires and all that kind of stuff to mm -hmm. make it street worthy. And that blew our mind. Yeah. Our I mind. remember that. Yeah. He had, he used airbags in the back to pull with the trailer. The radiator mm -hmm. came off. It was just like, yeah, it was like a model. He just took it apart real quick and put it right back together. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was pretty intense. Well, you had mentioned earlier about uh, JP or Jim Parkinson tuned by JP out of Fort Smith. Probably. I mean, I would say our area, I'm in Northwest Arkansas. So one of our regions, most known and um, best tuners, I would say. How often, how how many times has Jim gone with you as your co-pilot? Let's see. Uh, okay, so about half of the 21, 1.0 Rocky Mountain Race Week, I was having issues where I had wheelied the car by myself and tore up some of the exhaust underneath the car. I was having all kinds of issues. Jim comes to me in uh, at Bandemir. And, you know, th at that time, I think the DA was almost like 10,000, right? I mean, it was hot, it was humid, couldn't get anything yeah. to school. And he helped me get the car down the track. So that's when we got started together. And then, of course, they followed us through the rest of the races. And then uh, he went to sick week with me. And uh, then we also went together and, you know, he took his car in 2.0 last year until he had some transfer yeah. rear issues at, at Tulsa. But we ended up taking the car to the finals and we won. 2.0 and then we got to go against Tom, you know, in the finals and yep. and, and, and having a great time. So, yeah, um, I do see hey, what Jim's done to the car. I mean, the car runs, the car runs on, you know, basically a 500 pound atomizer injector uh, mm. on 91 octane down this road. And then we convert over to methanol and basically just change the plugs. And, and I mean, he's got the thing totally dialed in on, on the street team with that big of injector. That's amazing. It, and that takes a ton of time too. that, you know, and not just like you're talking about the dyno earlier, but that takes a ton of street time and, and driving and, you know, on off throttle and part throttle. And I, yeah, he's very smart. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Well, um, you know, let's, let's talk about some other drag and drive stuff too. What, what tires do you run? Um, you know, how, how do you get that set up? Do you change tires while you're racing? Yeah, I do some. Okay. So it depends on the race. Like last year in 2.0, when we, we won, I just ran the Mickey Thompson 275, the pro radio the whole time I drove on it. I didn't pull a trailer and, uh, that worked out well. Uh, yeah. you know, going to go on the really long one, like through the mountains, of course, you know, I run just a, I just got like a street tire with one of those jigs kind of has like the, the Batisi well looking wheel that kind of matches the front of the car. And, and that's what I, and then we just bolt the other ones to the trailer. That's awesome. Yeah. It works out good. So yeah. do you, do you pull a trailer for each event or do you? 
Well, I do, except for like the one, like I said last year, I didn't. I, there's been a couple of times I have not pulled a trailer, but most of the time I do. Yeah. Carrying, you know, extra alternator, used to carry extra radiator, water pump, of course, plug, plug wires, you know, all kinds of different electrical stuff. So. Yeah. Packing and unpacking that in that car would suck <laughs> to, to well, make passes every day, you know, so having the trailer you can just unhook and you're generally pretty good. Yeah, it is. It's, it makes it easier. And, you know, I've actually went quite a few times by myself on these races. Like before I, you know, at gym and stuff, I would follow mm -hmm. Jason, all those guys, which, you know, we could follow them and stuff. But basically my passenger was about 15 gallons of fuel. Dang. <laughs> you know, that's, so that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bunch. Well, uh, um, what other events do you have planned for the year? Well, Where we know so, you went to sick week. You did great there. We're going to do, I'm going to Chicago next week to uh, run at route 66 raceway with Tom Bailey and Alex mm -hmm. Taylor and some other ones. And they're having like an eight car shootout. I think there's like yep. big tire cars four little tire cars. And mm. uh, we're going to do like exhibition runs uh, and then do like a qualifying and go into Sunday. So that's going to be a lot of fun, you know, just to get to go out and be at a national event like that. Yeah. And the week after, I plan on doing the uh, King of the Open Road race that Jared Holt has down in. Perfect. In, and then from there, we'll just have to wait because my daughter's got all her motocross racing right now. We've got all that to chase. And I don't know what will be available after that. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, you know, kind of kind of the reason we talk about that and are having you on, obviously, tonight, too, is also, one, your car's great. Uh, you're a good dude, but then also the Dragon Drive World Champion. You know, you're mm -hmm. you're in the top running for that. I think you're tied for for number ten or eleven on that list. Um, you're number eleven on the top one hundred, but you're only three points behind the leader. So that's pretty awesome, considering you know uh, everything. We're one we're one event through the year here, and you're running for the top. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I didn't realize that until you had sent me a message. <laughs> That was going too much going on, you know. Uh, oh yeah. But you know, I I hope you know here in the future, uh, with my daughter Jasmine and stuff, that we can start doing these events more. You know, she probably yeah. will back down some on the dirt biking, and we can actually do these events together and try to catch more through the year, and uh, you know, just keep going. And maybe eventually we'll try to build her a car. And, oh man! Uh, you know, now try you're to, talking. Try, yeah, try to make a you know kind of a family deal out of it, and, and try yeah. to have some fun. That's That'd pretty cool. cool. So, so for motocross racing, I'm sorry to change it up here, but for motocross racing is, well, do you travel like, like you do for dragon drives? Is it kind of like that? Like you guys are out across the country? Yeah. And, and more so because, you know, like for instance, uh, last year we went to California to, for her to qualify. Loretta Lenz is the biggest amateur national, I guess, mm. in the world. And so they only take the top 42 in each class. So you've got like seven regions. They take six riders to make it all up. So, yeah, we go to like California. We probably end up going to Illinois here again in a, in a few weeks. And then luckily, one of the big qualifiers is actually here in our hometown this year. So that, that will save us some travel. Yeah, definitely. So how many miles a year do you put on your truck and trailer combo? <laughs> I've had the diesel I have now. I bought it in April two years ago and i just hit sixty five thousand miles let's go that's what i'm talking about man that's what it's about <laughs> getting out there and seeing the country um what is some of your favorite parts of dragon drive i think you've kind of mentioned more of the the driving and the seeing people and things like that but uh but let's hear what's your what's your favorite aspect of it well also just the racing community family honestly you know it's 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 so mm -hmm. much fun to be around people especially you know that are very knowledgeable about yeah. the, whole, the whole the whole sport you know uh just trying to learn from people and, and and do that you know it's it's i kind of take the same approach that i took in baseball is is that you have to have a team behind you and you know there's a few that can do it on their own but there aren't many that can do it on their own you have to have help and uh you know i feel like i'm just in the beginning of the learning stage of of all of this and hope that we can do it for many years and to be honest with you, I would like to eventually go really fast, you know, so you do go really fast. 
<laughs> well, that's what I tell people, though. You know, it's kind of like with the motocross thing. When you're lined up next to 40 other people on a gate and everyone's trying to get to that first corner that's only 25 foot wide, I can tell you right now, that's an adrenaline rush, too. I mean, it's like it's like riding a wheelie in the car at 80 miles an hour, but it's at least you got a cage around you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know how people motocross race, man. You're, you're a bigger, you're a, you got more heart than I do. I, I don't know. That's, that's pretty impressive. So when you would say you want to go really fast, what are you talking? Like, what do you well, want to get to? What I would like to do is my objective is just, Oh, high sixes around 200 miles an hour, a car that's still reliable and it can be done with a light car, you know, get to the, like the minimum weight, like 3000 pounds that, you know, they have, I guess with the driver, whatever the different rules, different sanctions. But, you know, once again, because like Ryan Mueller, I mean, he does my motor stuff and I mean, it's just been spot on. I mean, he's, you know, he does errands and, and Dotsons and everybody. And it's, it's been a game changer for me, you know, on, on that part of it, you know, having the right combination, you know, especially running a hydraulic roller, you know, you get to that point where maybe, you want to go a little faster and you maybe want to run, you know, a little last roller and, and, and possibly aluminum rod and, you know, up it, you know, a little bit more, you know, cause we've already mm -hmm. got the top fuel hoop, uh, cylinder head, you know, gaskets, you know, we really don't even push my car because, you know, we're learning the suspension and everything else that's going on with it. So, you know, it can be, it can be pushed harder cause it is that good engine combination. Wow. So, would, would you take the Camaro to that or would you build a new car? Well, I have a 71 split bumper that I've had for quite mm. a while that, that would be perfect, you know, and it has to have a flat hood. That's, that's the thing, you know, I got to stick <laughs> with the flat hood. Uh, but you know, that, that might be an option in the, in the future and then to, you know, get like a 60 or 650 chassis yeah. and uh, you know, just simplify everything. A lot of things I'd like to do different where, like your computer and everything's much more accessible if anything happens. All the wiring, you know, is where you know you can get right to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we're seeing, you know, that that level of purpose built streetcar stuff, guys that are going that kind of speed, but still, you know, you look inside those those high level cars like that and yours, and everything's super clean because it has to be. You have to be able to with a cell phone flashlight know what you're looking at on the side of the road at two AM, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, all the simplicity of it, you know, but once again, too, we talk about going fast. I mean, you know, my car's not heavy, but it's not light. You know, when we went across the scales on day one at uh, Orlando, we were 35.47, you know. Wow. So I'm, a couple, I'm like 215. So, you know, that shows the car still pretty heavy. Uh, and it just, it's a lot harder on parts when you try to go really fast, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's where we need to start with a new combination of losing weight. Yep. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. And and obviously, you know, the the more weight you can lose, the better because then that helps initial acceleration, all that kind of stuff. And then you know, that's uh that's pretty awesome. But you know, we went from a few years ago to where nobody ran sixes. Now there's you know Alex Taylor, Tina Pierce, and seven other people that are gonna are, are planning for sixes. And you know, now we're here and. You are planning for that as well. It's pretty amazing. I love it. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's the plan and uh, we'll see where it goes. I was going to say, you know, and another thing like my car, like when we were in Florida this year and, and did the 2.0 and stuff last year, uh, the car ran about 185 degrees tops. I actually wow. don't even kick on half the time. I'd have them come on like 190, kick off at like 170. They'd, it would just hover around 100, 185 degrees. You know, when you come into a little town or something, you slow down a little bit, it would actually increase a little bit. But it's pretty amazing how lucky we've been that the car with the Mazur 55-gallon pump and, and using the VP race ready coolant and all this stuff has really made the car very usable without getting hot. Yeah, I think that's one of my favorite aspects of when people are building a car, you know, when, when a car is built for drag and drive is the, the thought process that goes into radiator sizing, you know, uh, hose sizing, things like that, what the temperatures are set at. And uh, as far as like when the fans come on and off and, and all that, you know, automation we talked about with Devin Vanderhoof a couple of weeks ago, you know, you're really, I mean, your car is a street car you can take anywhere and then that thing goes out. I mean, what's your what's your best mile per hour you've been? One eighty five. 
Golly, I mean, and that car will idle in a McDonald's 2 a.m. drive through and then go out and run 185 miles an hour. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, I mean, you know, to, to do that. And uh, I think it'll get to the point, too, where, you know, the car doesn't have a wing. You know, it's it's it, it sits fairly low, but it's not low, low to the yeah. ground. You know, that, you know, like I know, like Doug Cook was going 190 plus in his Nova. And, you know, it gets to the point where, you know, you've got to be safe. I mean, you're really starting to hit some heavy speed. So, you know, I'm sure if we could squeeze another four or five miles now out of the car and another two or three tenths, you know, we might need to get to that point where we need to put a wing back on it and, and do things like that to be a little safer. Wow. That's awesome. So do you have any crazy like roadside repair stories or any wild like drag and drive stories from the events you've been on? Well, uh, yeah, like I've mentioned the one where I was in, you know, North Philly and Dozier and Dotson, all of them helped me pull the intake off, realize that the lifter had hit the cam and, and, you know, they were like, Oh, we feel so bad. You we're leaving. And I said, no, you guys got to finish your races and stuff. I mean, I was fairly experienced in traveling, you know, with baseball and stuff. So it wasn't a big deal just to, you know, cause I actually played in Philly and, and I kind of had an idea where I was going and what I was doing. So, you know, just to jump, jump on a plane and, and, and get that done. But that was, I don't want that to ever happen again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Or if I do, I have someone with me that can help me drive. Yeah. There you yeah go. That drive home would be rough. Yeah, it was. And, you know, when you go out uh, on 70 uh, west out of out of Philly to Pennsylvania, it's like almost like Colorado. There's no flat road. I mean, it's all hills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then you cut back down through West Virginia and all that stuff. So it was hard to stay alert and focus <laughs> at four in the morning. <laughs> I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Well, I definitely want to say thank you for coming on. Um, one thing we didn't talk about was the trophy that's over your left shoulder. What's what's that one for? This one here uh, is from first place last year at that race week, 2.0. Uh, I really like this one. This Doug Cook presented this to me, the motion race work, like racer of the week during nice. that race, which is a really cool deal. Another one of the uh, Rocky Mountain race week, uh, ultimate radio wins. I think we won three ultimate radials in Rocky Mountain Race Week. And then, of course, the helmet from Sick Week. And uh, we got second there last year. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Well, I was right on the money. I should have called out some of the other wins. Uh, so congratulations on those two. That's pretty That's pretty awesome. Well, I hope uh, – well, I'll say that I know we're going to see you at King of the Open Road because I've already got the rooms booked. And uh, we'll be over there hanging out. And we'll come by and find you and uh, get a little bit of – time with you in front of you know, in front of the camera again talking about the event and we'll obviously record the car making passes because it's so good looking and and just like I said earlier does what it should do all right guys i appreciate you having me on here yeah, yeah I'll, I'll probably see you at uh the event next weekend at juliet too yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah catch catch up with me we'll visit and hang out yeah i'll definitely swing by and at least say hi all right yeah. <laughs> thanks clint see you bud yep. guys, take care so, yeah, man, jealous of that guy's car. That thing is so nice, right? So nice, yeah. And uh, obviously, as a winner, you know, we saw that in the pictures there and all that. So, uh, super cool car, super cool guy for sure. Well, dude, let's talk about uh, the next segment here. That um, I think you just closed the screen, didn't you? you uh, did. Nope, not not on that one. That was uh, oh, that was our okay. photo. So I am oh. ready here to present. And we are going to do the found on racing junk, actually. So I was actually talking to them today, a bunch of good group of folks over there at uh, racing junk, the official classified buy, sell, trade uh, classifieds of drag and drive addiction. Which you can't tell, but I'm actually wearing my racing junk t-shirt from PRI. That's awesome. So our first one here is a, a 10 second. Pontiac Ventura small tire for 14000 So this is looks like it's in Vegas. Um, reduced price for this weekend only, fourteen k. Um, it's a 73 Ventura hatchback. It's a project uh, his son started. You know, looks like it's a 498, uh, 12.5 to 1 Eagle rotating four block dart style, uh, 320 aluminum heads. 
Uh, so this is actually pretty sweet. Uh, I think it's yeah. uh, 10 seconds for 14 grand. You can't, can't really beat a deal like that. I mean, that's why this car stood out to me essentially because it's turbo 400. It's, you know, already a big block. So, you know, you can spray the house down with that thing. 12 and a half to one. I mean, you know, good race gas and all that kind of stuff. You'll be there. And I thought these cars are not necessarily, you know, the, the most sought after, but this has a great body style to, to be a great opportunity and 14 grand to run tens. I mean, I, you know, right. That, you can't, it seems like a pretty good deal for a complete car. Yeah, it's kind of hard to build something for that price. Unfortunately, there's only one photo here, so. Yeah. Well, it's Vegas. He had to get back in the casino. <laughs> <laughs> so that is our first one. Our second one here was interesting. This is the Street Outlaw Starter Kit. So 30, <laughs> 35 grand here. Scroll through a couple of the pictures here. I mean, it's not a bad looking car. Was was that a shot of the hood there? Let's let's see the hood, because man, that's uh, the paint that's pretty on sexy. It? Now, do you, do you think that's paint or is that a vinyl? Ooh, for thirty five grand, that probably better be paint. I'd hope so, but it, yeah. you know, paint and vinyl nowadays, it's it's really hard to tell apart. Yeah. So this one looks like it's an Alabama seventy nine El Camino five seventy two cubic inch. Uh, 625 horse, almost 300 shakedown miles since the build. Uh, World of Wheels Pro Street first place winner, uh, professionally crafted beast, uh, tubbed and narrowed back half with custom 12 built uh, 411 posi gears, Willwood discs on the rear. So again, another pretty pretty sweet car. Be cool yeah, radiator. R700. You think he's talking about a 700 R4 trans? What they handle what? 1200 pounds of torque? I would think so. So it's overdrive. So it is ready for drag and drive. Yeah. I mean, it could be. <laughs> That's not a, a common trans, I don't think, for, for a build mm. like this. But so, yep, these are our two cars for this week's found on racing junk. Yeah, and again, racingjunk.com, that is the the place to buy, sell, trade. Any drag and drive stuff is on there. We obviously recommend doing that. It's so much easier than dealing with a lot of Facebook stuff. You know, that's always a it's always an interesting situation there. So yeah. Well, we've got a few minutes here before Monday morning racer is on. So let's talk about some of the other stuff, some things we have planned. For the year, you know, we talked about events earlier. Um, one of the things we've been working on really is building out our social media and how we want to post and where we want to post and all that stuff. I know you guys have seen a little bit of a, I would say, decline in our posting on dragondrive.com Facebook page. Uh, we have been pushing a little more towards the Dragon Drive Addiction Facebook group. So if you are not a member over there, make sure you join that group if you want to see. You know, obviously there's all kinds of tech questions are asked over there, all kinds of uh, pictures of everybody telling their stories and all that uh, come from that. But now Eric posted up a Turbo Tuesday set up the other day or yesterday, yep. today is only Wednesday <laughs> of this week, even though it feels like it should be Tuesday of next week. Um, so we went through and we pulled a few of our favorite pictures that were posted on there. And if Tom allows, uh, every week we're going to pull in, we've got one post a week that we're going to do these with. It's not always going to be Turbo Tuesday. It's going to be some other, uh, you know, Will Wednesdays and, um, you know, some other things that we're working on. We're not going to put them out in the world yet because we want to have some fun with it and uh, and come up with. So, so one post a week will be what our schedule is going to be from here. So again, that is in the Dragon Drive Addiction Facebook group. So let's let's see who you got picked this week, man. Yep. So we picked out some of the ones that had, you know, the most likes on them here. So uh, this first one here is obviously one that we're all familiar with. We've got Chris Paget's uh, wagon here. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's one of my sweet. favorite. Uh, again, one of my favorite. That's a, a new hashtag. Hashtag one of my favorite. You're right. Uh, that's going to have to. Cars. That's going to have to be a shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, great dude. And uh, oh, hey, there's yep. another one of those guys we've seen before, too. 
Yep, another one of these pictures in the group was a Clint's car that he posted. Again, yeah, that's such, I do a, like that such car. a nice car. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, this one was Corey Thompson. Mm -hmm. So I don't know much about the car. I, I do know it's turbocharged. Yeah, <laughs> they all they all should be for Turbo Tuesday. Yeah, uh, this one was from Eric Yost. So I mean that yes. thing's that's a lot of shiny so, going on in there. So clean, and uh, all that's I think Cerakote stuff uh, on there. So you know, keep the heat down, all that kind of stuff too. But then also, it just looks so good. It does, and. And that was the first time that car had been out in a long time. I think like eight or nine years is the first time that car had been out. So really? Yeah. Really, really cool story there. Nice. And then we all know this one as well. Mark Manor. Mm -hmm. Another very, very nice car. I got to see this one at Hot Rod Drag Week last year. He was there. Yeah. Yep, I love the exhaust dumps there under the bumper. Looks so good. Right, you don't have to. You didn't have to cut anything. It just kind of comes down and mm -hmm. still keeps all the original body to it. No, no hacking any of that up. Yeah, no, no circle saws in the fender. <laughs> is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and of course, we all know this car as well. Uh, Stefan Gustafson. Gustafson. Mm -hmm. This is an actual, uh, a really cool photo, the way it's been edited with the car and everything black and white. Yeah. Yeah, I like all the black and white and then a few things that are that are colored there. I mean, how do you do that? Do you turn the contrast way down? I don't know. I don't know. It looks really, yeah. really cool. And that car is a, another one of my favorites. Yep. And it is it is overseas now for the first time in several years. Yeah, I'm really excited to see all these uh, events, the coverage of the ones that are mm -hmm. overseas, because, you know, we've been talking a lot about the ones that are here. But I mean, like you had mentioned, there is five going on in the same weekend. Yeah, like that. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be pretty intense to see that for sure. Um, and then do you have the Facebook group link pulled up? If not, I'll do it real quick. Nope, I don't have it. This I'm going to go ahead and grab here. it. Go ahead. I was just going to say, this is the last picture of the ones that I grabbed from that post. Gotcha. I'm going to put the link to the uh, Drag and Drive Addiction Facebook group in the chat. So you guys, if you're not members there, make sure you are jumping over there to keep up with all of that stuff. Yeah, there's definitely uh, definitely a lot of posts that goes on in there. A lot of good information being shared. Uh, and like we said, we're going to do one of these style posts uh, once a week. So, and then yep. like you'd mentioned, as long as we have time uh, at some point during the show, we're going to try to showcase some of these different vehicles. Yep. Yeah. And so if like, if it's a Thursday or Friday post, we'll cover it that next week. So that ought to be pretty fun. Um, well, while we wait for a few minutes, because I know that Monday Morning Racer was doing uh, an interview on another podcast so he'll be on after that um i do let's talk about dragon drive world champion because this thing is going to be intense there's a lot been a lot of attention around it the last few weeks um obviously we're pushing a lot of that attention too so we're going to a lot of these outlets that are new to dragon drive racing and we're really putting that in front of them so it ought to be it, it ought to gain momentum over the next few weeks and with having 14 drag and drive events over the next 11 weeks um we're looking to to really change the game i guess as we come up so looks yeah. like he did just pop in so let's bring him on and uh and let him tell some fun stories because this dude uh lives the dream life i'm telling you right <laughs> mr monday morning racer how are you sir Gentlemen, I am doing great. Just got done with Chaos Live on the Chaos brands and outlets, Funny Car Chaos and Nitro Chaos, along with my co-host there, David Ratton, who is an extremely professional announcer. He should be counted top five, I think, across the country for sure amongst those gentlemen that hold the mic. But I want to say, Michael, look, Many say I'm living the dream. I like to say I'm working the dream because it's a lot of work. And you you two know it's a lot of work out here to be out here doing what so many say they wish they could do. 
Well, yep. sleep in your car, quit your job, drive all night, put the work in. We'll That's exactly in. right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Well, man, listen, introduce yourself. Tell everybody where they can find you right out of the gate. All right, Lee Craft, the Monday Morning Racer, and you can find me on just about any platform from Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, by searching Monday Morning Racer. You also will find me on the competitionplus.com platform, which is the world's largest online drag racing magazine, the place where you can believe what you can believe what you read on the internet, especially for drag racing, a lot of breaking rumors and things of that nature and deep dive stories. I host one of their shows called the Power Hour on Tuesday nights. And I am the pit correspondent for Chaos Nation. That's including Nitro Chaos and Funny Car Chaos. Thoroughly love doing that job. I've always said if I can't drive, which I hope I do get to drive one day, working on that, I want to be Steve Evans. And I'm able to do that in Chaos Nation. That is awesome, dude. And I'm telling you, I love the coverage you do. I love the energy you bring to stuff. You make me excited whenever you, I watch your stuff, man. I hope we, uh, I hope we can do the same. So, let's talk about uh, what what kind of stuff do you mainly cover? It sounds like a lot of drag racing in there. Is is there something that if someone's looking for a certain style that they they got to go to Monday Morning Racer? Nitro. Yeah, baby. Nitro. Look, I love all forms of drag racing. If you go to the Monday Morning Racer YouTube channel, you're even going to find beyond drag racing. You'll find autocross, dirt track racing, whether it's late models or sprints. You will find uh, sports car racing. You will find IndyCar racing. Actually, my IndyCar uh, Indianapolis 500 first Indy 500 video last year is starting to somehow take off here recently. Nice. Who knows? But nonetheless, if it's motorsports, I want to cover it. I want a shot at it. But drag racing is definitely where my heart is at. And it's the niche. And within drag racing, because drag racing is so diverse, mm -hmm. it is extremely diverse. I mean, you know, there's small tire, big tire, no prep, a lot of prep, radial, nitro, methanol, supercharged, centripetal, turbo. Who are those guys? Anyway, it's <laughs> extremely diverse all the way to the drag and drive scene. And yes, I would say that wheelhouse for me definitely would be the nitro burners. I work for a couple of top fuel teams. You'll see me at NHRA national events with comp plus doing peak pit notes, things of that nature. But yeah, yeah, I would say nitro, but just as this show is drag and drive is special and it should be recognized as such. <laughs> That's right. That is right. That's why I like you, man. <laughs> So what events have you uh, already attended so far this year? Wow. What events have I already attended so far? Uh, a lot more than I thought I was. <laughs> it seems like it always <laughs> works out that way. So the year began really for me with the Gator Nationals. Mm. And from there, it just has been nonstop, not complaining, but it was Gator Nationals to Ennis, Texas for the Funny Car Chaos Classic, the biggest funny car race in the world from there, Pomona, California. And coming back from, from Pomona, California, was able to be the infamous starting line camera for the spring fling. I made double O shit show. Uh, I've made it gentlemen i've made it so <laughs> you are the, now more famous than you were <laughs> i'm more famous than i was but I'm, I'm just this infamous camera guy nobody knew who it was it's like you know i'm more than a camera guy i've got this platform like y'all y'all call me we'll talk about it like why did i do what i did so there for the spring fling million huge bracket race i leave las vegas we have to cancel well rather postpone the Louisiana Funny Car Chaos Race, I hightail it back to Las Vegas after spending a night in Albuquerque, work the national event, roll back to Z-Max, work that national event, and was this past weekend at Edgewater Sports Park for Nitro Chaos, and then drove from Cincinnati to Indianapolis to cover the Cletus and Cars slash NHRA regional event where Tony Stewart and Brian Howe won. Woo! Dude, that's that's a lot. You're a busy guy. You're a busy yes. guy. You got to keep rolling, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so are you going to be at the Chicago NHRA event here? What next weekend? So, yes, it would be next weekend. Remember, Mother's Day this weekend, gentlemen, Mother's Day. Go get those gifts. Be prepared. Be prepared. But the national event tour will return to 
Route 66, the Route 66 Nationals, and we will have that great facility once again in play. I uh, I want to be there. I, this is one of those times, like, I wish I could be in one, you know, two places at once, but we can't do that. We can't do that. I will not be there. I will be at the Texas Motorplex, Ennis, mm. Texas, for the double divisional and the regional that will be taking place there that they have dubbed the Lone Star Nationals. And I've got an important role. It's a going to be a fun role. I am going to be working directly with Competition Plus and the Texas Motorplex to bring content on that wow. stream that will be on NHRA, YouTube, and even Drag TV and their NHRA.TV. So I'm looking forward to that opportunity, looking forward to tell those stories. And uh, you might even see a little bit different look for MMR uh, that oh, particular man. weekend. But one of the biggest reasons that I am disappointed that I'm not going to be at Chicago, or at least I wish I could be at Chicago, guys, Drag and Drive Exhibition yep. for all the NHRA diehards. For them to actually get a glimpse of how yeah. great the drag and drive scene really is. I can't wait for them to experience, you know, uh, Alex Taylor and uh, Bailey and everyone else that's going to be involved mm -hmm. and see those cars and see them perform. And I don't know, even Alex blowing the doors off again. <laughs> yeah, I hope she doesn't do that. Good luck to her. That's uh, that, uh, that I can't imagine that ride. Uh, as the window comes in on you and uh, and keeping her stuff together and and making that work, you know she she's pretty awesome at that stuff. Well, dude, I'm excited about this. Uh, I guess you get like lane announcer, pit announcer thing. It's going to be kind of cool, and uh, we're going to have to tune in because I, I want to see this new look you're talking about. <laughs> maybe a, maybe a different set of glasses. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> if, if anybody's awesome. already been following you you know you you got a little glimpse a little taste <laughs> that is so great man well congratulations on all your success well dude what we're here's what we're bringing you on tonight for is because we need we want some insight man we want good or bad you know we rolled out the dragon drive world champion um presented by summit racing appreciate those guys coming in with just the clutch on on helping the Dragon Drive community grow, and you're around so many point series and things like that. I want to get your take on how you feel this is maybe going to, like what were your first thoughts of this, and then how you think this may help the sport grow? Well, first thoughts, just excitement. I feel like when you have a point system, it brings a bit of legitimacy no matter what. Yep. And it brings some validation to it as what. Well. And it also gives you a benchmark to look forward to year after year from years yep. past of who excelled and who was excellent and who was most consistent. And you're going to clearly get that now with this type of program. You're going to be able to no longer will you debate, oh, this guy's at the top or this gal's at the top. You would say this was the top competitor in the particular format in the particular class in the particular whatever because they are the champion and yeah. i think it's good for drag and drive i i look at the like the dirt track world there are particular events in dirt track racing that if you win this event and then you win this event and then you win that event there's multipliers on it and there's extra money and there's extra notoriety and I think that should be the case in all forms of motorsports. Why not? Mm -hmm. So I certainly believe that this is a great and good thing for Dragon Drive. And it, I mean, it can't hurt having the support <laughs> right. and the backing of something like a group like Summit involved. And you that definitely adds a huge amount of legitimacy as well. But it also... I feel like, because I see this in Nitro Chaos. First year, Nitro Chaos mm -hmm. is a points championship. For the last two years, it's just been one race. And then next year, it was two races. And great events, stellar events. A lot of competitors mm -hmm. coming out running 80% Nitro and up. But this year, you can already tell the buzz. People are like, I'm running for that championship trophy. I yep. want to be the champion. I want to be the first. I want to be top dog or top lady at the end of the year, I want yeah. to be the top. And when you have a championship run, P 
people can clearly do that and say that. And look, the fact of the matter is, out here in drag racing, out here in motorsports, you're dealing with people who have egos. They might not tell you, but they have <laughs> egos. They want the fastest car. They want the quickest time. They want the most points so they can hoist a yep. trophy at the end of the year and say, I am the champ, like their queen or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So well, what have you, uh, go ahead. Uh, what have you seen in NHRA, whether good or bad, when uh, events do add that point series? Well, first and foremost, on the negative, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> do not complicate it. Yeah. Like right now, I still don't understand. Though I like the program, this too fast, too, t too, fast, too tasty challenge. I can't even remember how it's put. The extra points that they get for winning in qualifying if they were semifinalists at the event before. I, I still don't understand. Mm. I, I love the money aspect of it, and they're racing for something more within qualifying. But how the bonus points are going to work later on, I, I'm confused. I'm confused. Yeah. Everybody, I, I'm sure, maybe not everybody is a NASCAR fan here, but if you look at the point system for NASCAR and how they have complicated it, like nobody, like okay, you want a stage and you get playoff points in the playoffs. But how much do they carry and how how yeah. far do they count? But but you still got to perform, huh? Yep. <laughs> Don't that, do that. Yes. Keep and that's, simple. that's why we, yeah, that's why we had such a struggle. That's why it took so long to put this together was because, you know, we would, we would put something together, ask a few racers, oh man, you need to change this. This needs to be happening or this needs to be added. You know, we had that a few times too. And so it's like, okay, so we go back and, you know, it takes time to put all that together. And then with folks like Summit being on board, we it really gave us a great uh, sounding board because we could talk to them and, you know, they're part of so many different racing series across the world, really, but across the country a lot uh, as far as drag racing and circle track and all that. So they really brought all that knowledge in that uh, we needed. And I think we've come up with, for the first year, the and a very easy uh, set of points for people to get. And then also, you know, as we go through this year and figure all of this out, we'll be able to add or maybe take something away that, that what didn't need to be there. So, so it's good to hear you say the, the same kind of stuff we were looking at. Just keep it as simple as possible. Yes. Simple. <laughs> yeah. And then now, uh, the, the chaos, you guys put a point series together for that. I was listening to somebody and I cannot remember her name, but she was coming out of retirement mm -hmm. to race the chaos series. I think she, she had a, a four plan, a four race plan uh, for the year. So that's kind of exciting to see that kind of stuff coming. And I think that's what right. brings these kind of things to the forefront. Just like you're saying, it provides more obviously publicity for everything too. And it gives racers an easier platform to talk on. And then at the same time, it allows sponsors the opportunity to, to put their name in one more, one more slot. Right. What you're talking about is competitors want to do mm -hmm. what? Compete. And Megan Myers to yep. win. Yes. Megan Myers, who you were referring to. She, in the interview in which I had with her concerning running for a championship, which she was very frank. She's like, I was done. I, Thought I was going to hold to retirement, which, by the way, let me say this concerning people who run Nitro. They never retire. They never do. <laughs> Look at all the crew chiefs that come back. Nitro burners are liars when it comes to saying they're going to retire. They always come back. They always do. But Megan Meyer, she's like, I was done. But with this particular championship and the amount of races and it being a bit more local, it just made sense. She's still yeah. a competitor. So she's going out there and competing. And though Drag and Drive is different within the world of drag racing, they're all competitors. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. they want to compete. And when you put up there as the top prize a championship and everybody is competing within the competitions to that ultimate goal of a championship and that championship if you've earned it it states you are the top competitor and go back to what i said about ego it all yep. plays in you are going to see more people step up i think yep. this year in dragon drive than you have before and they're going to challenge the status quo of the top dogs 
because there is that much more to run for. Well, and one thing that I, I love about this setup is we're already seeing it. Racers would do one big event a year and then they would be done and they would main, maintenance the car and go to a few races here and there. You know, now we're seeing guys like Aaron Schaefer. He's already planning. He's like, okay, I've got my three events down. I know what I'm going to do. He's, you know, taking a real methodical plan to it. And the same thing for Doc McIntyre, you know, in the Sea Red Camaro. I mean, they're coming out swinging. You know, they would typically only do one event a year. Now they're going to do come out and they're planning for three. So it's pretty awesome. I agree, gentlemen. It is awesome. I love this announcement that there would be a Dragon Drive World Champion. And it just it just ties together the whole world yeah. from, you know, Hot Rod Drag, all these great events, Hot Rod Drag yeah. Week and Rocky Mountain and all the other ones that are popping up across the nation. It is not just one or two or three events anymore. There are so mm -hmm. many events that you can participate in. And it, I'm I'm stoked that there is going to be at the end of the year. Uh, champions crowned in in this in dragon drive and i know i'm sure the competitors are stoked as yeah. well because well they want to yeah. be top they do well and and a lot of folks are supporting other people now you know they're rooting folks on that uh that they think have a have a good opportunity to to win it well man let's let's spin it and uh let's let's get back on you uh eric you got i think you had a question there for him yeah, what uh, what other events do you have planned for this year? I'm sure you've got quite a schedule, huh? It, certainly, quite a schedule. A matter of fact, talked a little bit with David Ratton on Chaos Live of what that Ennis Texas Motorplex Double Divisional Regional will kick off. It will kick off another little motorsports tour that will take me from my home in South Carolina to Texas for an entire week. Then I will shoot up to Eddyville, Iowa, just outside of Oskaloosa, as they say, Oski, to Eddyville Raceway Park, where we will have a three-day event with Chaos Nation because it will be a double header. Nitro wow. Chaos and Funny Car Chaos on the same grounds at the same track. We're expecting over 50 combatants using wow. nitro methanol in their funny cars, front engine dragsters, fuel alters, uh, rear engine dragsters, you name it, out there at Eddyville Raceway Park. And then I will head back east for the national event at Bristol. Uh, currently right now, if there's a national event open, I go to those and work alongside with competitionplus.com. If it is a chaos race, I am there. That is my priority. So many more chaos races ahead from the first ever east coast appearance of funny car chaos they will be at maryland international raceway later on this year the furthest west they have ever gone will be taking a trip out to albuquerque to the drag strip in that area and then many of the regular favorites such as mocan no, Mr. Knox is definitely familiar with that. And yeah, Carney, man. Nebraska, and others as well wrap up the year down there where the famed Cajun Nationals was ran, State Capitol Raceway. So it is a full slate. Sprinkle in some Southeast Gasters Association races as well, along with some dirt track racing. Wrap it up more than likely in Pomona and be there at PRI. It's a full year, ladies and gentlemen. But <laughs> I is am certainly glad to be working this dream that's awesome well man tell everybody again where g give us uh nights of the week and times for all the shows you're on and then where they can follow you and all that stuff well the first show that you'll find in the week would be the competition plus power hour where we cover everything in drag racing in particular in hra drag racing with a heavy em emphasis and we have the stars of the cars from john force to those that you don't even know their name on that show on Tuesday nights on the competitionplus.com platforms, whether it's YouTube, the Twitter page for competitionplus.com or the Facebook page. That's 9 p.m. Eastern time that you can catch it. Wednesday nights, roughly every other Wednesday night, you can catch me on Chaos Live along with my co-host David Ratton, who is the series announcer. And we cover everything in Chaos Nation from Funny Car Chaos to Nitro Chaos there at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then my own show, Thursday nights, Between the Slicks, because we talk about it all on Between the Slicks in the world of drag racing. 
That airs at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And again, we've had Mr. Narks on. We have had uh, people from Europe on, Australians, uh, people who get their license in Top Fuel, Chaos, you name it. If it's drag racing, we want to talk about it. We've even had super fans on that have been to over like 700 national events across the country in their life. That would be where you can find me live and you can find me all the time at Monday Morning Racer on just about any platform. Just look for the shades and the beard. <laughs> awesome. Dude, you are awesome, man. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thank you for taking the time to come out tonight. This has been this has been a, a blast. And uh, I realize we've got to have you on more often, man. We've got to have you on more often. Guys, look, keep waving the banner. For Dragon Drive. Dragon Drive is awesome. I got my first taste of it. Hot Rod Drag Week last year, working under Warren Evans and yep. doing some work for the stream. I even had the opportunity to break the news about blasphemy and what was happening at Worldwide Technology Raceway and got to follow uh, the Javelin uh, with mm -hmm. uh, Goldsmith, right? Is that, that's, that's, uh, that's Goldstone. That's Goldsmith, yep. you know, watching uh, them and what they were going through. What a stellar event it was was and definitely want to catch more of them i'm it's been sad that i haven't been able to catch my local one that's the eighth mile one the what street and eat is that yep, what it's yep. called yeah street and eat yep. uh, a lot of my local drag strips and i'm hoping i get to work hot rod drag week again because this year it is going to be brutal the Dude. route that they are going to be taking them oh my goodness i live in this area mm. and i'm thinking to myself you all better pump up those brakes and be ready to go <laughs> yep. down the mountain because it's yep. going to be a ride. But Dragon Drive, it is certainly special in the world of drag racing. And I think it is such a great symbiotic relationship between two elements that really at some point diverted, but do need to get back together. And that is hot rodding and drag racing. Yeah. Let's keep them together. And Dragon Drive is doing that. Keep up the good work, gentlemen. Thanks, man. See yeah, you thanks. soon. Okay, listen. <laughs> we've got we we've we need to learn from him. Yes. He, he is a he's a great announcer. He a great host, great on camera talent, I guess is what uh what you would call Monday morning racer Lee Craft. He is a he does it right, man. I'm telling you, and is a busy, busy guy. You know, we thought we were busy. <laughs> we have nothing on that guy. You know, you start talking about three live streams a week. Can you imagine? Right. Mm, yep, man. Three I mean, live got, streams a week. We we do two. We do two a week, and uh, and one of them's thirty minutes, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty intense. Well, what else do we need to talk about this week, or uh, or we get, we wrapping up pretty close here? I think we're getting close. Uh, we we've kind of talked a little bit about it, but I think we we want to hint a little bit about um, we're going to be looking for uh, competitors that are going to chase after this world champion. Yeah. So yeah. we're gonna be. Uh... I, I don't know how we're gonna do it yet, but we're gonna be finding a way to get those racers to reach out. We want to be able to, to, to hear from them and, and kind of get an idea on who, who thinks that they're going to make a run for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's probably as we, as we gain momentum with this and we bring on new sponsors and things like that for this uh, championship point series, I think the story is really going to be these racers that take on this, uh, this challenge. This is truly um, historic within the drag and drive community. There's so many events that one are being created, but then two at, before this year, they were all kind of standalone. You know, each event was its own deal. This is really a great way for us to bring new attention to, you know, new potential sponsors that are in the, in the automotive industry that have never thought about drag and drive. You know, it's funny when you go to like a PRI or, you know, some other trade show and you're talking to someone and they're like, what is Dragon Drive? You know, and to right. a guy like me, like, oh, I still have work to do, man. You know, I just need to work that much harder. So um, I tell Eric all the time and the rest of the uh, Dragon Drive Addiction team that we're going to cram Dragon Drive down everyone's throat until everyone knows the respect that it deserves. Because this is, in my opinion, the hardest racing 
motorsports racing format that you can possibly get. Like it's hard to put a car on the limit and make the fastest pass you possibly can each day in your class, no matter what that class is, is even though maybe a 13 second class, that is still a very hard thing to do. And then turn around, get in that car, drive two or 300 miles, make another pass. There's a lot of guys that during a drag and drive national event will make more passes in that one week than they will the entire year at any of their, their local drag strips. And like I said earlier, you know, drag and drive racing, 61 days of racing out of the next 79 days. It's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. We got, uh, 200 KSS asking where are the rules and points system posted? It is on the dragondrive.com page. Just search for Dragon Drive World Champion. I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and put it on here as well. And I think uh, everybody has it. I think when we had Devin Vanderhoof on, he he said it best that that people build a car and they make a six or eight second pass and then that's it. They, you know, they put it on the trailer and maybe they make a handful of those through, through the day, but you're not really enjoying the car that you built. You spent all this money to, to drive it for six, eight seconds. And if you make eight passes in a weekend, how much did you drive it? You know, to where drag and drive now we're, we're getting people back in the cars, butts in seats, cars on the road, back to the original hot rodding. And I'm excited yep. to see more of that. Well, and I think it really just shows like people want that adventure. They want that fun. They want that attention that they're going to get when they pull in the gas station and you show up to put in 91 octane in your <laughs> race car. That's just jump, 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 in the parking lot. And bef- in 12 seconds, you have a, a group of people around the car talking to you about it and things like that. And like for my neighbor, you know, he has a car that runs high tens. It's a big block Mopar. It probably gets the worst gas mileage you could ever imagine if you were going to drive it. But I keep trying to explain to him. I'm like, man, that's part of it. You know, get that car ready. Do like Rich Guido and Bill Armstrong and so many other racers and drive your car to the racetrack, make passes and drive your car home, you know, right? create that, that memory. And that's probably the absolute best way to, get a car, get the car's bugs worked out is to just get in and drive it across town and let it get hot and kind of make you nervous. And then you get going again and oh man, it's cooled down now, you know, and Red Hat Scotty, he's uh he's a hundred percent right. 91 octane, you must be rich. Roll down the road on 87. And <laughs> yep. um, uh, he, he was hinting at some tuning tips earlier uh, in a Facebook group chat that I, I'm with, with him and a lot of other racers. And, uh, you know, he, he's got big plans. He's coming to Coder as well. So that'll be the next event that we are attending as King of the Open Road. Eric will be at the NHRA Chicago event, getting some content there of the eight drag and drive racers. You Clint Sadowski, Bryant Goldstone, um, uh, Steve Morris and the Boostmaster. You've got uh, – uh, Tom Bailey in the the car, uh, six seconds, 2.0. Okay. Alex Taylor and them are, have been thrashing to get their car, get the 55 back together to be up there. And then... And I think that's uh, going to be really cool to see because yeah. a lot of the people there are are diehard drag race fans, but they don't, yeah. they don't realize that these cars aren't going the same mile an hour that these NHRA cars are, at least not some of them but they're yep. going pretty dang fast and then they're getting in them and, and driving them. So I, I really hope yep. that uh, a lot of the people that, cause that's going to be a, a packed event. And I really hope a lot of those yep. people um, really see the value and the fun and excitement that drag and drive can bring. Well, and I think it's going to allow us to have one more layer of people that are going to be interested in these events that have never heard of Dragon Drive. So you start talking about, you know, I, I think Brian Lunge is probably announcing it, I would think. And so you have a national stage to talk about Dragon Drive. But at the same time, we also want to thank Howard's cams. You see them right down here on the the thing on the uh, deal. They are who sponsored this trip for us to be able to do this or sponsor Eric. They, they are getting him in because they are partnering on a new top fuel funny car. So uh, it's going to be kind of fun. So you're going to be around that level of car 
yep. as well as all of these other uh, drag and drive cars. And I think once you start kind of getting those folks in the mix, again, we're going to see that that bump in viewership. We're going to see that bump in fan participation within the drag and drive community. Because, I mean, for people to understand that, you know, Alex Taylor is going to get in that car and then drive 300 miles at, right. a, at another event, they're going to be looking for that kind of stuff. You know, they're going to be looking for those people to come and attend and things like that. So, yep, yeah. And then they're going to want to look for the events that are near them too. Yeah. So, you know, what, what drag and drive events are coming to the tracks near me and, and that's yep. going to get more people to those events as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a really good play, really good thing um, for the, viewership of the sport and the, for the entire community. Cause it's just one more level of people that we're going to get to talk to that are already dragging drag racing people. Now they're going to be like, Hey, I can probably compete in that. What's this world champion deal? Hey, I'm right. faster than that with my NA car. And then they come out and attempt it, you know? So, right. So and I don't know. Run at. And I don't know if you've listened to uh, Cooper's latest podcast with Cletus. He had, he had mentioned on there and I hadn't heard a lot about it, but one of his goals is to make a funny car, or was it a funny car? Or a, no, a top fuel dragster, street legal, to take on a drag and drive. Could you imagine that? Dude that? Is an animal. He's an animal. I can't. I know. I cannot imagine. But <laughs> you know, your your closest car would probably be the closest people that could probably make something like that happen uh, would be Royce Payton. You know, like that dude, they change blowers and all that kind of stuff. That's what you would have to do to uh, to do yeah. that. I can't imagine the, you know, so now we're going to look at unlimited cars and like now there's a rule in there. It's got to be added. It says must be a door car, you know, right. <laughs> like you got to get in through a door, you know. Yeah. So we're already to the point of pro mods. Like what's what's next? You know, I guess funny cars, the next thing. Headlights, tail lights, blinkers, baby, <laughs> and a horn. So, yeah. Well, cool. Well, uh, I do want to say thanks to Clint for coming on tonight. I know he is a busy guy, and uh, thanks again to Lee for coming on tonight. Thanks to everybody that's made comments tonight. We've had a had a great show, great comments, great questions, all that kind of stuff. And again, you can support the channel. We have all kinds of new ways: super chat, super store, uh, super stickers, all that kind of stuff. Because we finally made it past four thousand watch hours in yep. a uh, in a rolling twelve months. So hey, all you got to do is just keep posting, man. It's amazing what happens. Yep, that's right. You're going to see so, us here twice a week. So, yeah, uh, Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go daily. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do daily dose again uh, between now and Saturday for Carolina Drag Cruise. We'll just have to see. So, um, yeah, not seeing anything like that posted. Yeah, uh, we've been posting about it a bunch and hope that you guys uh, do some. Uh, digging there on the Dragon Drive World Champion. So thanks again to Summit. Thanks again to all of our race car friends, Molly Motorsports, Howard's Cams, Sweet Patina, and Racing Junk. Can't do it without them and definitely can't do it without you guys that are watching this and have made comments and posted and all the kind of stuff, tags us and everything and everything like that. So thanks a bunch. We're out of here. See you Saturday. Yep. See you guys.